Four years ago, Colin Kaepernick took a knee. He was advised by our next guest as a respectful protest, and the rest is history. Army Green Beret, former NFL player Nate Boyer with us now. Nate, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great to have you. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Let's dive right into Roger Goodell's statement there. Obviously, he didn't mention Colin Kaepernick, but he did say the NFL was wrong in how they handled the peaceful protest. What goes through your mind, Nate, after hearing Goodell speak? Uh, I mean, first of all, you know, I, I know Roger, and I know the situation is obviously uh, very nuanced, <laughs> you know, especially when you look at it from a maybe a corporate mm -hmm. standpoint, and, and, and there may not be, be no bigger corporation than that. So, you know, and we're also in this time now where it's like um, – no matter what, it's like everybody's got to speak out. Everybody's got to say something. And if you don't, you know, you're the bad guy or whatever. So there's that obligatory portion to it, which I don't love because I feel the same way when I think about this whole, you know, national anthem controversy was, you know, we, we, we've got to continue to get it away from that as well. You know, the, the fact that the reason that Collins sat uh, and then, then knelt and then so many others knelt was for, uh, was to protest against police brutality, excessive force, uh, racial inequality, social injustice, all those things, you know, so like that idea of feeling obligated to stand in Colin's situation, you know, I don't love, I don't want anybody in my country to feel obligated to do something, so, uh, you know, obligatory patriotism. And then now we're in a, in a place where it's like, it feels like there's a lot of obligatory, you know, uh, you know ap apologies or um, just statements, you know, about, about, what's going on in our country today. And so I don't know if I love that either. I'm kind of on the fence, but, but I know that that is, it's not an easy situation that he's in as far as trying to figure out how to navigate all that with, you know, when you look at the demographics of the ownership and you look at the sponsors and all that stuff. So I, I, I know that's not easy, but I, I, I know him as a man and I do appreciate Roger Goodell. I will say that. What kind of um, contact, if any, have you had with Colin Kaepernick recently, Nate? I, I honestly, I haven't talked to, to Colin in a couple of years and, you know, for no, for no bad reason, just different paths. And, uh, and that's all good. You know, it, it, we stayed in communication from the time we met, um, you know, back in the preseason in 2016 through that season, through the Super Bowl, and into a little bit of the next season. And then, uh, haven't, um, haven't contacted in a while, but obviously I've been following stuff that he's doing. Some of his reps have, have reached out and stuff like that, but you know, he's got a lot going on. He's got a, I'm sure he gets, he's getting hit up a million times a day. And, and obviously he's, you know, chosen to remain relatively silent. So that, I mean, that's a choice that, that, uh, he's got the right to, you know, you have the right to remain silent. The cops will tell you that. The, the, <laughs> I had um, to, I had to. The, um, <laughs> I have an interesting question for you, given that you've been, um, kind of at the center of this since the beginning. I wonder if your perspective or any of your views or your feelings or anything about you, you feel like have changed from being at the center of a situation like this rather than um, at the outside. Absolutely. Uh, a, a lot of that has changed. And, you know, it's been um, not only conversations, but uh, involvement, or, you know, work I've got to see firsthand um, across America. I mean, I, I, whether it's in, in, in New Orleans, um, or, or Chicago, you know, a lot of these places to watch and see law enforcement, how many people in law enforcement that want to see this change too, that want to see things get together. They want to see reform. Um, they want to bring, you know, pride to that uniform, but then also to see, and a lot of us have been able to see this last week, um, the, the people that make it really hard for that to, to happen. You know, when, when you, when you just, you watch the, I don't know if it's mindset, lack of training, uh, it, it's a mix, you know, I mean, everybody's, we're all individuals, we make individual choices, but it's hard to defend a lot of that stuff that you see. And most cops that I know, every cop that I know, hates seeing that, you know, and they, they always reach out to me. And a lot of those are police officers of color, you know, and they, and they, they want to find a way to bring um, that pride back to the badge. So we have the right people that want to do this job, because we can't just do away completely with, with policing. So that's the biggest thing I've learned. But also, like, as much as I say, and, and, and want to believe, you know, that I, oh, I just don't see color. I don't see color. We see color. We do. You know, it's impossible to not uh, acknowledge that as a white man who feels like I'm not a racist person, still see through things, see things through a different lens. So I, I have to always check that. I have to recognize that and understand that um, that's just the state that we're in. Maybe that's the way that I was, you know, uh, I mean, I grew up in a, in a, in the city mostly. I grew up 
in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a pretty di diverse mm -hmm. neighborhood. Uh, and you see, you know, you, you meet all these different people, see, you see all these different cultures and all that, but it's still like you you still see a white person in the mirror. So maybe it's part of that. I'm not sure, but you know, we, I, I want to continue to fight to, right. to, to bring us together and to help us all uh, get past that somehow. No, I appreciate that. And obviously you saw something special in Colin, and that's why you did connect with him initially, and that's why you were able to advise him so he could conduct himself in a respectful manner with those protests. I want to just get back to him for a second, Nate, and I realize that you haven't mm -hmm. spoken to him. But a lot of people think it's finally time now. He's somewhat been vindicated with the NFL apologizing for how they handled things and that he needs to have a shot, a real shot, in the NFL. What will it mean when this is all said and done if he doesn't get an opportunity to play again? I, I don't know. I mean, does, does he want to? I mean, that, that gets to, to a conversation where, you know, you think about, is he genuinely a starter right now? Like, does, does, if he is a backup, would Colin Kaepernick even want to come back and be a backup quarterback right now with, with, all, with everything that he is? I mean, he'd be the most high-profile player in the NFL, I think. Um, you know, would he want to do that? Would he even want to be in that situation? And then I think about like the, you know, the, the, say he gets on a team with a with a good starting quarterback that everybody believes, that, okay, this guy's a starter. And then that quarterback starts to struggle. And then it's like, what what happens now? You know, is it does it become a vocal thing? Is it something where now, even though this team has has brought him on the squad, uh, people are people are saying that he's not being played because of who he is or whatever. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, if he wants to play, I think he has every opportunity to, to right now. And if he wants to, I think he should. I mean, why not? If that's what he wants to do. Um, I don't know about vindication or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, if that's something that he wants to do and, and he truly, uh, truly wants to, to be a part of that and be a part of the team, um, I think he should do it.